welcome back everybody. Tashi RV Nerd with Bish's RV here on a beautiful morning. I don't know if it's morning or afternoon or when you're watching this, but whatever it is, I hope it's treating you well. Getting you some updated footage on Cougar's big triple slide couples model here. This came out updated last year and the updates kind of slipped through. I don't know if everybody caught what they did. I feel they greatly improved the bedroom and bathroom and I feel kind of brought a classic floor plan up into the modern age. So if you haven't seen this, it's what I call a flat deck fifth wheel where it's all on one flat deck. You don't have the gooseneck and the extra stairs up to the upper deck like a fifth wheel, but it's basically a fifth wheel floor plan where you have those opposing living room super slides, all the windows in the world over on the camp side of the RV, which is awesome for taking a look at your site instead of the sweaty shirtless neighbor who always looks like me and never someone you want to look at. Ugh. Uh, but also, They've redesigned the, the bedroom in this. Uh, it comes with a king bed by default. You could always size down to a queen though. We're gonna talk more about that in the video. But they've tweaked around the front closet and the washer dryer setup on this one so that you don't end up, if you do install a washer dryer, you don't end up losing a lot of your storage. And if you don't install a washer dryer, you just gain way more storage as a result. I think it's a really killer outfit. Now these are really well known for their hot cold climate packages. I think Keystone's really leading the way in some factory solar solutions. We're looking at a base model package today, but you can get uh, far more advanced with these Which is interesting because a lot of times you look at a big model like this and you think oh, that's a uh, that's something you're going to use in parks You know, it's a park type camper. Well, you could build it to stay off grid if you want a little bit now I try to share good with the bad one of the things I do want to volunteer here is it does have a somewhat low cargo carrying capacity I think given its size and uh, I do think you're going to want a minimum good three-quarter ton truck because this one's got some pretty decent hitch weight and she is pretty long. And I'm going to uh, continue to do that, give you the good with the bad, let you decide which one works best for you. And let's get in there and see if maybe she's the right one or not. So kicking off here, I, I, like I said, refer to this as a flat deck fifth wheel, where it's a fifth wheel floor plan, it's just a travel trailer. It's all on one level, so you don't have the extra set of, you know, two or three steps taking you upstairs. Why would you go with something like this? Well, maybe if you got a hitch in your giddy up and uh, the old gray mare ain't what she used to be and the knees just aren't, you know, cooperating like they used to, this might be a solid option, a good alternative for you to uh, a fifth wheel without really sacrificing a whole heck of a lot. Or what if you just, you know, you got a, uh, a heavy truck, you got a truck cap, you don't want to, uh, you know, give up your truck bed or something like that. <laughs> Somebody doesn't realize they're on candid camera right now checking out the J-Flight next to us. But uh, hey, that is what it is. My point is, um, you know, there's a couple different concepts for this. Now, I generally, when I look at a big trailer like this, I think, okay, this is something that's going to work really well um, in an RV park. But I've mentioned that in previous videos, and a lot of people have said, hey, shut up, nerd. You know, some people camp differently than you can possibly imagine. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's fair. I love that kind of feedback. Um, yeah, evidently there are some folks who do look at something like this and say, you know, we want a big rig, but we just prefer to get away from everybody. The one thing I will tell you with the length of this, it's going to be questionable for a lot of state and national parks because it does creep over that 30, 32 foot mark. So you're going to want to kind of plan ahead and, uh, plan accordingly really on this one. Now that is a carpetless slide. It's a Marine woven slide floor. And just to kind of give you an extra little level of insight in here, your, uh, recliners, uh, you can see, you know, they are kind of a little bit of a wall hugger. And even when that height of bed is open, you can still use at least one of the two recliners. So let's say you got some grandkids or something over for the weekend. You got a nice little spot that you can, you know, park them down here and they can crash. And, uh, you know, you don't really like lose out on a bunch of your RV. Now they do have power outlets, household, and uh, a set of United States Bs. That's uh, US Bs to the, uh, th those who are untrained in the ways of the RV world on both sides of the sofa, basically. One thing I will also mention, like if you look, the windows on the super slide side, those open for airflow, but the windows beside the hide a bit in the back, those are just viewing windows only. So kind of keep that little detail in mind. Now, speaking of airflow, they're using their Blade Pier air system here, which uh, is not a whole lot of other travel trailers have anything like this. One of the major points on it, if you live in an area that has real dusty, questionable air quality, it has a residential air filtra uh, filtration system, like just an easily residential air filter that you can replace on that, which, uh, you know, most towable RVs don't have things like that. Now, let me give you a view from the driver's seat right over here. I'm going to park myself in the right-hand theater seat. So, uh, in a sense, this is the one that's 
not as good for TV viewing. And with that big old Jumbotron 4K TV over there, I'd say she's all right. And I do like the fact that if you notice, they didn't mount it all the way at the top of the slide. So it's a very direct facing uh, organic view like the Maxell tapes guy getting blown away by the, uh, the music there. Down below, we got ourselves an electric space heat and fireplace. And I, I feel like they used to use maybe a wider fireplace unit because there's those empty pockets on either side of the fireplace. That's very unlike Cougar. Usually they're very good about using every little nook and cranny of space. I would personally like to see that touched up a little bit, maybe a little more attention paid to that area, but that's just me. I'm sure it wouldn't be hard to pop those panels out and make some shelves out of them, actually. So, you know, there's still opportunities there, I'm sure. Um, it is a toe kick slide. I do know that some travel trailer builders are working on getting away from uh, toe kick slides in the kitchen. Uh, it, it's going to take a little bit of time and effort. It's more than just changing the slide system out. It literally will end up changing the way the island uh, is installed in the RV. Some things that I've learned by going through some of my factory tours are how some of those different things kind of all interconnect a little bit. Now, the sidewalls of the RV are six and a half foot tall, but it does have uh, a nearly six inch vault. So it does open up very nicely in here. It drives me crazy though. Like if you ever check out an RV dealer website and they show you a camper like this and they're like seven foot ceiling. Well, no, not really. I think that that's misleading and I want you to know really what you're getting into here. Now I will say the way Cougar executes their vault, it does very effectively give you that extra headroom. Um, but it's not technically like a seven foot ceiling all the way across. We're looking at a table and chairs today. Booth dinette is, I think, actually standard on here. So I think the table and chairs is one of the, uh, the swaptional items on this. Uh, over here, notice that your full, uh, your entry door rather does have a full viewing window. Privacy shade bottom up so you can keep the shade kind of pulled while still peeking over the top to maintain privacy. Although in a case like this, when you've got a super slide looking <laughs> right at the stairs, I've always thought it's real easy to see, you know, whether it's Ted and Carol coming over to play Euchre with you, and you know you're really from, like, the Michiana area, when you can uh, play and spell Euchre, because, boy, that's a weird one. Um, or you can determine if it's a gas station, murder hobo, so kind of keep that in mind right there. We're going to get all this storage open in just a minute. I kind of want to give you a, uh, a look around. Now, this is interesting to me where they would have had to place a heat vent, would have been right there in the floor in a super high traffic zone. So they move it over to a cabinet side. Um, it does still have multiple heat vents in the floor because it's a more effective heating system, but where they would be functionally prohibitive, they do tend to move them. They're starting to kind of work on that. Look at the, uh, the kitchen outlet placements too here. So we have some on the island, some over there on the coffee bar, and what do we have over here? We have one set of outlets uh, behind the right-hand uh, upper light over there. So kind of keep that in mind. I do like the symmetry on that kitchen. Something else I like on this one is the way this TV can pivot around. So, you know, by default, TV faces the theater seat, which I think makes sense. But what if you want to sit over here and lounge? Or what if you have some friends over and you want a little conversation? Corner? Well, that TV's on a double-jointed pivot arm. Uh, you know, it's a contortionist TV, basically. So it can swing around and give you some good views from just about any direction. And overall, I think the kitchen storage in this is pretty fantastic. We are looking at the 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Uh, there is a gas electric two-way option. You'll lose about 20 to 25% of your potential cold storage capacity if you do swap over to that one. So kind of keep that little factor in mind right there. Um, what is kind of cool here, you have that full dedicated pantry and, uh, and, and the fridge. Like sometimes it, it feels like you either get a good fridge or a small pantry or whatever. Like you're getting both here. I think they just did a really good job. And again, that symmetrical kitchen where it doesn't matter if you're right or left handed. That's hard to find in a lot of travel trailers. Overall, I think they did well on that. I really like the big open space under that sink uh, for some waste bags yet, uh, potential as well. And... Did you notice what they had going on with the sink here? It's like a split farm sink. So I'm kind of curious. What do you think about that? Like normally, it seems like manufacturers either go with a split two basin sink or they go with the farm sink. And this is kind of 50-50. Is it, is it good enough to please everybody? Or is it actually not as good as either one of the other two solutions? Leave me a note. Let me know. 
Now, one of the kind of cool things here is right by the entry door where we're standing, you've got your in-command panel. So, like, if you want to kill all the lights, you can do that. But if you don't want to have to turn all the lights off and on from the panel, there actually is a switch back there that you can do it from the living room area. Or you could always sync it up to your phone, which is kind of cool. Now, sliding backwards a little bit here, right next to the entry door, so easy travel access to the uh, toilet would be our bathroom space. Now, what I'm about to show you and describe is kind of a bummer. But I hope you appreciate the fact that I will shoot you straight when I see something, I say something. It's a major policy for me. Real quick, first of all, porcelain foot flush stool with some, I think, fairly fluffy, friendly space about it. But my eagle-eyed viewers might notice a couple little white speckles on the wall behind it back there. Um, a uh, interior wallboard, apparently when it got really hot this weekend, kind of popped out. We had to tack that back in place. We, uh, For now, for uh, purposes of this video, we did just a quick fix on it. But we're going to have to bring that in. We're going to have to work on that wall panel a little bit. I don't love that fact. I guess it could have happened about any brand. It happened to this one. And that's a bummer. But it is a what it is, you know. Now, looking over here, uh, you can see how that is a, either just huge storage or that would be your potential washer-dryer location, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, previously... Uh, this floor plan, it, it, it actually, I think, lacked any sort of washer-dryer hookups, which in a big triple-slide trailer like this, kind of, it felt a little silly to me that it didn't include that, but hey, now they do. So that's where I was saying I think they fixed things there. Good headroom in the showers, you can see. Um, and hey, if you don't care about the washer-dryer thing, now you just have some serious storage space built right into that sucker. Um, there's also a motion light directly above my head right here. Uh, you could turn it off, you could turn it on, depending on um, you know, where you take it to dinner and how many drinks. You... <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. But my point is you can put it in motion mode or you can turn it off and on. Whatever works for you. I like motion mode. It just kind of makes the most sense to me. Now, up here in the bedroom, you see that these can be outfitted not only with a second air conditioner, but they kind of really complete the job by centrally ducting the second air conditioner, which I think is very cool. A lot of manufacturers, when you start getting into second airs and travel trailers, you won't find that. Now, they're very good about outlets in here. And if you notice, these household outlets have some yellow stickerage on them. Uh, anywhere that you see that yellow sticker, uh, that is telling you that that outlet is prepped and run to the inverter prep of the RV. So if you do want to add an inverter, those outlets could be powered off-grid. Um, inverters uh, do not come in their basic solar package we're looking at today, but when you get their uh, two more advanced available packages, then they do become available. Now, I'm not all the way around the corner, and you might be wondering, what about the other side of the bed? Other side of the bed also does have the same set of outlets. And just like we saw in the living room, you can lay down in bed and kill your uh, ceiling lights without having to get up and down and go to the, the touch panel or bust out your phone or anything. In case you're curious, what is this little thing right here? Well, that is an FBI uh, security van listening device, um, also known as a thermistor. What that is doing for us is it's talking to the in-command system. Basically, it's a temperature sensor so that your air conditioner and your furnace know when to kick on. Look at the bedside windows on this sucker. Those are huge, dude. Now, what if and, uh, if you look at this, the, the bed eats up the slide. What if you want more room to walk around the bed or some kind of side stand? This only comes from the factory with the king like we're looking here. And for some clarity on something that I described earlier, if you look under the bed, you can see that big bed base. Um, I do think it is a little big to just instantly swap a queen mattress into this. It might need a little bit of adjustment, but I have seen some people do a little, uh, you know, carpentry DIY work on this. Now, if that's something you wanted us to do, we could probably do it. I can tell you though, if you have the handy capability, you would save yourself a mint by doing it yourself versus having like a, uh, you know, a RV technician and their hourly rate wrapped up into this thing. But it doesn't mean that we couldn't do it for you. Um, if you look, though, this bedroom, they did opt for more storage instead of, like, a lot of brands will kill the overhead cabinets and they'll give you, like, a TV hookup up there. This one, if you're laying in bed, that would put your neck, uh, you know, up high a little bit. What they offer you here is the ability to put a, uh, a standing TV. But now that I say that, since it is down lower, that would actually crane your neck down a little more. So let me ask you, what's more important in this bedroom? A focus on the entertainment or a focus on the storage? I'm inclined to lean to storage, but that's just me. Uh, okay. 
I just thought of something that's maybe kind of crazy. Imagine if you would, you're laying down in bed, just like I'm doing right here, and boy, when I lay down flat, my fat face really flattens out like a pancake. Really, really attractive on this camera. And again, from that perspective, your neck would crank all over the place. What if you had a screen mounted inside the slide on the ceiling directly above your face? I think that would be pretty cool. So while you're pondering that, I am going to close up the slides here and give you a look at her uh, in road mode. With the sliding pocket door getting up here uh, into the bedroom, shouldn't be a problem. We kind of mentioned it earlier, but with the, the bathroom over here on the hallway side right next to the entry door, getting inside of this area for access, again, should not be an issue. Uh, notice again, they were very smart about not putting like a heat vent in the floor right down here where you're going to you know, be dripping shower sprinkles or something into it. So, um, you know, they, they're, they uh, I guess you call it like a hybrid heating system, partially floor vented, partially cabinet ducted, just whatever works. What kind of uh, surprised me here, and it really tells me Cougar's listening to folks, is the fact that they made sure, even though it might be a little tougher if you're a person of larger stature, they made sure that you could get up here and, ooh, that was close. That was really, really close. But you can get up here, and you can get to and open the refrigerator. When the video began, I mentioned that I do recommend like a solid three-quarter ton truck. If you take a look at the weights and the measures here, uh, that will kind of be a, a little bit of uh, supporting information, I suppose, as to why I feel that way. First of all, the RV is very long, and typically most half tons struggle to handle something that is this size, let alone the fact that it's, you know, 86, 8,700 pounds empty weight. Well, it's, it's 10, 5 fully loaded. That's a lot of weight. And... The hitch weight's probably the kiss of death for most half-ton towing. Now, we're going to have to kind of walk around this one in a little bit of reverse order, but I did want to touch on the patio side over here because I think it's something this does very well. Uh, again, we've got all tinted windows, all max airflow windows, and all windows that they could facing the campsite of your RV, which is very nice. Dual power awnings uh, as well. Um, that entry door is anti-slam, so if you happen to miss Piggy Karate Chop, hiya, Kermit! that thing you know it's not going to go slamming against the side of the rv now with a full front closet and travel trailers some manufacturers will not maintain a full pass-through compartment that is one of the things i really really like that they did here up top we're prepped and ready for tire pressure monitoring so if you are going to be towing and going that might not be a bad idea you saw the motion lighting activate right there and that is kind of the command center of the rv the the central nervous system of it if you will the in command system what that's going to do is basically all the wiring and everything goes through there. So Keystone was the first towable manufacturer and still one of a very select number of towable manufacturers that fully color codes all their wiring, which I think is a really awesome feature for uh, wiring reliability. Secondly, they got away from traditional blade fuses that tend to pop and, and, and you know cause problems more often. They went to a, a far more robust automotive style relay there's also a manual override switch in there where like let's for whatever reason it, maybe there's nothing even wrong with your digital panel inside you just don't want to walk in and out of the rv you could be outside and open your awnings without going indoors which i think is kind of cool notice how they're still doing 30 pound tanks a lot of brands are swapping down to 20s to try to save a buck and something a lot of people don't realize and this is very this was supposed to be temporary so for a while i wasn't talking about it but Keystone struck up a deal with Dragonfly Energy to maintain including uh, a, a two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. So 200 amp hours of lithium battery standard on these, which I think is very cool. And I do like how they're also including that uh, handy little lock on there just to kind of help make sure that they stay where you left them. Now I'm at a bad angle to showcase it, but the batteries are in the way the other direction. This big black box with the red switch we're looking at is essentially a glorified battery disconnect, but it really is more than that. Um, the name of it, it's called the Giggy Box, uh, named after I believe Mr. Brad Giggy, the lead engineer that developed it. And what it does is it fully negates all parasitic load and it gets rid of that ugly bank of relays at the front of the RV that a lot of campers tend to have. So it just kind of cleans up the whole thing and improves the wiring of it. Now, the thing is the solar package can still charge the batteries even while it's disconnected because it kind of has a, uh, a direct bypass. But if you don't have the batteries on, 
uh, you, you can actually manually disconnect the solar package up there so there's a second disconnect on these which is kind of interesting now we're looking at the base 200 watt solar uh package so you see that there is a little thing that says inverter prep up there and uh it is a 15 amp controller which isn't uh, you know massive by any means you might be able to support an additional 200 watt panel up there on the roof but what is kind of cool about that is uh, they are using Victron components even on their base package, and it is still an MPPT charge controller. So what they're doing, they're still doing well. Now, I've got a whole separate video on Keystone's Solar Flex suite of things if you'd like to learn more about that. Cougar is capable of being outfitted with the 400 package that includes a 2,000 watt inverter and the 600 package that has a 3,000 watt inverter. The thing is, because they're already including the lithium batteries based from the factory now, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, I think that 400 package has become the best buy. Now, we're looking at a full auto leveling system, which a lot of travel trailers don't have. And Cougar has standard. It's always been a big thing they do. And under that belly, you saw that it was enclosed. But they do so much more than that that you can't see. So a lot of brands have some kind of radiant barrier blanket. You know, the tinfoil space blanket in the belly. Cougar does that. Some brands have holding tank heaters. Cougar does that. Some brands have a forest air heated belly. Cougar does that. They also add additional forced air heating points, so they have a direct forced air heat dump right on uh, every single holding tank. And hello there. So I am not uh, somebody familiar with the bugs of our world. What is that? What is the name of that critter right there? Kind of pretty coloring. And yeah, I said pretty. So what? Maybe I'll go hang a you know, sheetrock around an engine I'm rebuilding later and eat some raw meat like a man. But yeah, that bug's pretty, so never mind. Now this, I think, is awesome. This is a single-headed sewer monster. It uh, only has a single stink pickle depository. You don't have to have multiple sewer hookups all in one. Goodyear tires standard on these. Again, we're TPMS prepped. Now back over here, uh, you see a couple things. We've got solar on the roof. But no matter what, you'll always have the little side mount solar prep plug in case you want to park in the shade and chase the sun. And then over there, we've got that uh, tankless on-demand water heater. And that is a, uh, a handy-dandy thing where, um, you know, if you are uh, taking a hot shower and somebody decides they want to do some cooking and, uh, you know, kick on a hot sink water or something like that, do some dishes, well, it is really nice that you don't suddenly take an ice-cold shower. I don't, I don't know about you. I love a hot shower like my wife is like why do you take shower so hot like i i guess we're inverse of the traditional male female thing i guess most ladies take super hot showers that's me i i like you know if i almost feel like i want to be sweating in the shower if that makes any sense i don't know why it's just that's a thing so that tankless water heater that really appeals to me now again all the windows over on the door side of the rv and other than these little toothpick windows right here they are all going to open for airflow, at least anything around a major seating area. Now our slide sides have that rough cottage cheesy texture to them, basically, which obviously very unscientific terms, but it is also pretty accurate. You can see how, uh, what, what that's doing is it's grabbing the seals. Plus there's an additional wiper seal on the inside, bulb seals on the inside and outside, and an interesting little kind of keystone thing that I don't see a lot of other brands do. They have, it, it, like, get your fingernails and, and feel under the trim right here where the wall meets the floor. And you're going to feel a groove. And uh, what they're doing there is if rain is washing down that slide wall, if it was a smooth surface, that rainwater would be inclined to try to wick under the slide and kind of uh, into the floor space. That little groove is going to call that, uh, cause that rather uh, rainwater to, to kind of pool up and drip and not start causing soggy sli uh, slide floors. Now, if you'd like to really kind of compare to see some other things that are out there that might be similar, check the links in the video description that I leave for you. Uh, you'll find things in there like the Reflection uh, 315, the Eagle 330, even something like a J-Flight um, 34RL or something like that 340 are okay they changed up their model number it doesn't matter you don't need to know the bottom numbers i'll leave you the links in the description if you're looking for really parallel if you're looking for a little bit bigger if you're looking for a little more budget friendly we've got all kinds of different things for you and let me know what you think about this one like where did they nail it and where did they fail it? how could they continue to improve 
let us know. And I'm not trying to like wink at you to be funny. The sun's at like just the right angle. It's like you think, oh, I can open up my eyes now. And then you're like, oh, I can't open my eyes now. It's, it's like, you know, when you're driving and you're, you just, wow, I really, pretty, pretty on brand for me went way off topic at the end here. Never mind. I'm going to wrap this up before I ramble further. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. So it's like I was saying, when you're driving down the road, you get this light in your eyes and you don't know if you should pull the visor down or if you should just swerve off the road and crash or...